G'day, it's Marshall from MM4x4. Today we're gonna to go through the process of installing one of our lockup kits into the MR Triton. All right, well first we'll go through what comes with the kit in the box. So what we have, a set of operating installation instructions. They'll give a step-by-step -step guide on how to do the installation of photos. A factory switch. A harness that goes to the shift connector of the uh, transmission shift lever. We've got the control unit itself, some ODB2 cables and some cable ties. Now the kit is entirely plug and play so there's no cutting into any looms or harnesses. You just use this harness here which has uh, genuine Mitsubishi connectors and that just intercepts the uh, shift lever connector. In terms of what everything needs to be done to do the installation, the A-pillar switch, that routes up here. There's installation of the ODP2 connector here. We need to remove this console assembly here to get to the shift connector harness, and then remove this area here to get access to the uh, factory blank switch. So I've already pulled apart the trim here so I can do all this with one hand, and I'll just go through the sequence with you right now. So in terms of the installation, you only need basic tools, you know, just some trim removal tools, a 10mm socket, and some screwdrivers. So the first step is to remove the wing from the side of the console. You can see that there's five clips, and same on the other side. As I said, these have already been undone, so I can do this with one hand. Okay, the next step is to remove this area here, and to do that, you just literally unscrew the knob and it's best if you move the knob down into the drive position and you can do that with the lever little tab here that releases it there we go and then there's basically just clips it just lifts up use the trim removal tool there's a clip here another one there and on the other side one there you just lift it up, prise it up gently, it comes off. And then it's a matter of removing this section here, where you lift this up, and then you just lift it up, basically, use your fingers. And see the red tabs there, and two at the back. And then there's also connectors in here. So there's there, there, and there are the connectors you remove. And that just comes out. So the next step is to slide this area back because we need to get to the connector harness which is right down in there. But to do that we need to undo two bolts, one there and there. Fortunately this one, this is in the way, so that means we need to lift this and lean it back. And to do that there are just two 10mm bolts down in here which you undo. And then it's a matter of lifting it up. And again there are some connectors, that's the 12 volt socket. Um, and just lift it up to make some space. So we can now get to this bolt here to undo. So that bolt and that bolt are undone with the 10 mil socket. So then on each side, you take these little tabs out, you do that, getting your fingernail under it, pulling it out, or if it's got a little, uh, like a punch hole, you push it in and then the whole lot will come out. So then this will slide backwards and you can get access down to the connector, which is down in there with it's that one there that I'm pointing to with the green on it. So now it's a matter of getting this harness. So this is it here. And again, that goes to the LED. So this now is routed up to this area here and under. So that's the connector there. So you basically push on the little tab and then it'll come out. A bit hard to do with one hand there like that. Now we just plug these in to replace that. Put that one in there. Now this one in here. That's it. So the next step is to install the factory switch, which in this car we're going to put in this blank position here. I just hit pause on the video there. I had Nick from Brisbane show me another way of getting the uh, blanks plug out of the car. Um, use a tool. Um, here's a picture of the tool on the screen now. And with that, he didn't need to remove the whole surround and get to the blank from the rear. 
So you've got a couple of options uh, in this sequence of how you can get the factory switch installed. Uh, by far the easiest is if you have a tool which you can um, just flick the blank out. Um, alternatively, just keep watching and you will see how to take the whole surround out and access it from behind. So here's the tool in use. And you can see that by getting it underneath and just twisting it, you can prise the, the factory blank out. There may be other tools that could do this job. You'll notice that the tool is round and is able to then uh, have that hook which allows you to twist and that releases the clip. Um, I'll show a picture on the screen of the clip that you're actually trying to get to, to be able to release it. Um, I wouldn't be using something like a knife because the sharp edges of the knife could damage the trim. Um, but there may be other tools available, but this is another method of getting that factory blank switch out, which saves quite a bit of time in installing the, the our switch into the slot. So many thanks to Nick for showing us his technique. And to do that, we take away this surround here. And to do that, you start by just pulling off the clip. You can see the white thing there. You lift it out on this side, then lift it out on that side, and you slowly work your way up to the top. And then the whole lot will come out like this. And there's one connector, which is this one here which you have to undo from the air conditioning control unit here. So as you lift it out, pull this connector off, and then this whole assembly comes away. Now the next step is to take this blank out and put our switch in to replace it. So to remove this part of the console, um, it's easier if you just drop the glove box down so you've got some more access here. And also take this bit of trim off here. There's one screw that goes in that position, take that out, and then it's to get it just unclips like that and then it's a matter of pulling this entire unit out now i'm going to need to put the phone down just so i can get this out but basically it just pulls outwards there are no screws other than the one i just showed you down there uh, one thing to look out for is this area here a bit there it's nearly on this side so there we go it's come out and now you've got access to the back here where the this factory blank is. Now to pull this, this assembly out, there are actually just four clips. One there, one down there, one here, one down the back, if I can see it down, down there, down the bottom. And then there's also a couple here on the side, here. So again, it just, it, it took a bit of effort to pull it backwards, but um, if you pull this, this back first, that makes it an awful lot easier and having the glove box open as well. Now on this blank, there's actually a dummy plug connected into it. So that got, gets removed. It's not really a dummy, it's just the, uh, I wonder what it does. Maybe it works if you put the proper switch in there. Who knows? So now I'll just uh, push that blank out. So I've managed to release the, uh, the blank now. You can see those tabs there. So what you're basically doing is pushing down on that tab there with a the screwdriver and pushing it outwards like that. And then it'll just come out and expose the slot. Okay, so if you use the tool to remove the blank, you pick up the video from this point here. And then it's a matter of just putting this one in its place. And you can do that by just feeding it through and clicking it in. That's it, on, off, done. So now it's just a case of pretty much doing the reverse to put it all back together. And just make, remember to get, make sure all of the various different um, switches are plugged back in. So there's, there's about two or three, there's those three. Uh, if you've undone the 12 volt socket, make sure that goes back in. So once all the cabling's in, now I've put the car back together, but you may want to do this and test everything before you put everything back together. Um, on the other side are all the cables on the ground. Now, that LED uh, cable, the switch that goes on the A-pillar here, basically all you do is you pull the trim back and you just run the, the cable, you see it just clips on, and you run the cable up under through here, under there, up here, Clip it on and then put the trim back.
like so. And then we put the ODB2 cables in, which consists of a cable that goes to the lockup kit controller and then a wire splitter cable, which is basically this end goes into the car. Here it is here. And that's the ODB2 connector there. So you can see where it is, just under the uh, fuel release. And then one, one end goes to the car. This goes to the car. This goes to the lockup kit. And this end is free to be used if you have an ADB2 reader like the Ultra Gauge that we have here. Now they're not provided with the standard kit. That's an extra you can buy online from various places. Final step is to plug the cables into the control unit. There are two identical connectors here for the black cable and then the other two only go in those two positions. And then the control unit can be tucked up here in the transmission tunnel. It's a good easy spot to get to it for the future if ever you need a firmware update, upgrade because we've made improvements or added new features. See it wedges in nicely up there in the transmission tunnel, it's nice and firm. Now that's all back together, the first test is to turn the ignition on the car. So you'll notice that the, the lights aren't on and then as the computer boots you see there's a red light on now. So that indicates that the um, computer has uh, communicated with ECUs and has now active. And of course you can turn the kit on and off and that's the max fourth gear selection. Next step is to do a road test. I've just moved the car to somewhere where there's some um, shade so the video turns out better. So the first test you want to do is uh, start the car. And this is the first test for drive tests. Put it into the drive mode and then just check that as you move it to sport it goes into first gear and then up one to second gear that works back down to one so that's showing all the, uh, the harness connections are working properly okay with automate sport turned on you're stopped you'll see the d as soon as you take off as the car goes into second gear you should see the two come up there it goes there and then as you stop as soon as it gets in the first gear it'll go back to D so that's telling you that it's controlling everything and it's uh, working well okay the next test is the fourth gear max feature so currently we're in fifth gear at 60 so we're in mode one which is normal if I now press the button you'll see it'll drop to fourth and then press the button again It'll drop back into fifth. Okay, to check that the LED button's working, we'll first check the LED, and you can do that by whenever you move it from drive to sport and back to drive, it'll flash for the mode that it's in. So that's one flash, so it's in mode one. And check the button works, we'll tap it once, that's selecting mode one, tap it twice, tap, tap, it'll flash twice, saying it's in mode two, we'll tap it three times, one, two, three, and you're in mode three. So that's showing that the LED button's working and uh, it's now good to go.